Welcome back to The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. Now let's look at the uh, newspapers this morning and see what major stories uh, have made the headlines. Uh, we'll be starting with the Punch newspapers. And the big one there is uh, talking about the Apapa gridlock. Should be on your screen in just a few seconds, yes. It says Apapa gridlock persists. Lagos blames NPA. Uh, MAN laments losses. NPA closes gates to trucks without reasons. Some will lose aid, says. Manufacturers urge government to develop ports outside Lagos. Businesses losing billions of naira to port congestion, says the LCCI. Nigerians spend 2.33 trillion naira on petrol in 12 months, says the NNPC. And uh, also, Kogi oil producing status, Inugu's exclusion from 13% derivation is injustice, says Ohaneze um, and the state. Also, Nigerian diplomat assault in Indonesia closed, recalled envoy returns to Jakarta. Southern and Middle Belt Alliance tackles NEF over voters' claim and 2023 presidency. Also, NMA laments as doctors and health workers flee Nigeria in droves. Still on the punch, APC will be divided if, zones, if it zones presidency to north, says Okorocha. Uh, or your PDP dismisses party leaders' plan against Makinde. And um, we can also find on the punch headers with guns risk 21 year imprisonment as someone who signs bill. Father arrested for impregnating 19 year old daughter. Suspect blames devil. And presidential panel sells seven story FRC and Lagos building for 100 million naira. On the Daily Independent, 30 state civil servants face bleak future in retirement. 2023 presidency Okorocha backs Southern governors, says Nigeria's unity threatened by tribesmen in politics. FG should dialogue with Igbo leaders over IPOP Kanu. PDP chairmanship horse trading as PDP zoning committee decides Thursday. Sit at home, Southeast um, WASSC candidate to retake missed exams. Lagos prohibits open cattle grazing as Sonwolu signs bill into law. NNPC records um, crude oil gas sales of $219.75 million in May. COVID-19, NIPRD, Cuba may commence vaccine clinical trials in Nigeria. We have power to sell FG property without notifying MDAs, PIC tells reps. Security operatives shoot students, protesting suspension of exams in JOS. We can converse support to allow states collect VAT. VATS. All right, now to the leadership newspapers. Northern and Southern leaders disagree over 2023 presidency. It's Igbo presidency or nothing, says Ohaneze. No, North must remain power, says Northern Coalition. A fair, fair panda faults NEF's population claim. Niger Delta activists back Southern governors. Um, Oshimba Joe celebrate in 2023, says Governor Sule. And also Nigeria's unity unshakable, and that's from the federal government. Northern governors mourn May Lafia. And Sokoto shuts down telecom network in 14 local government areas. Some will lose signs anti open grazing bill into law. And also on the leadership, Kaduna, Ekiti, Anambra, Kwaibom lead in fiscal transparency says a report. Uh, finally, on the leadership, monthly deadline institute uh, directs firms to remit value-added tax to FIRS. All right, and then let's also quickly see what we can find on the Daily Trust newspapers. How Boko Haram killed, or how Boko Haram crisis killed 300,000 children in Northeast. Young boys used as suicide bombers. Many died of malnutrition. One million others displaced in 12 years. Attacks on children must stop, says UNICEF. And um, ISWAP intensifies recruitment, Army says. Reps demand reports of assets seized from ex-leaders. And NNPC earns 366 billion naira from crude oil product sales in May. Oshimba Joe most, quali most uh, qualified rather, to succeed Buhari in 2023, says the Nasarawa state governor. Plateau Cross River reject compulsory COVID-19 vaccination. That's all we can find on the Daily Trust. Good morning to Mr. Chris Wandu. Thanks for joining us once again. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for having me. All right. Um, I think you can start with the conversation on zoning. Uh, Mohaneza says um, presidency must come to the southeast. 
uh, the uh, Northern Coalition is speaking once again about having the numbers to hold the presidency for a lot longer. And White must also come to the North. And of course, uh, there's also Governor Sule mentioning the Vice President Yemi Oshimbajo. Um, so let's start off with that. So, um, every region in Nigeria has the right to the president So, it is a pure agreement of the it's a wonder uh, it's, it's a struggle. Like, uh, president into period, uh, to to uh to to the north and the uh, and the south. All right. I, I think it's a, it's a struggle listen you know, here in um Chris Wando this morning, we might be having challenges with the network. So we're going to have to reconnect with uh, Chris Wando, who's a publisher of CKN News, and get him to share his views on these stories. Um, the first one, of course, he was speaking about is concerning zoning. Um, I think there's a couple of people who have made who have mentioned as the Northern Coalition that say the, of course, North, you know, has the numbers to hold the presidency for, um, you know, a lot longer. Um, I think that I also saw a story on uh, Baba Med, you know, still speaking about the same zoning controversy. Mm -hmm. A lot of people would have the same argument that yes, it is, um, you know, uh, um, every section of the country has a right to vie for presidency. Um, but of course, the idea of zoning, you know, really is to, is to ensure that every single person gets a turn, uh, gets a chance at the presidency, uh, the seat of the, you know, the president. But, you know, it, it also goes beyond just presidency. Even in states, in local government, there's also that same zoning arrangement uh, where you hear that, oh, this you know, local government has had it for four years, let's give it to this local government next, or these people are coming mm -hmm. next, and some of all of that. And so they always play those internal politics. The p political parties themselves also play that politics and say, okay, whoever is going to be our national leader, you know, would be from the South or we from the North, and then the president, uh, the person who, who gets the ticket for president will be from a totally different region. Um, so there's that. Okay, let's bring back uh, Chris Wandu. Uh, can you hear us now? Yes, I can. All right, go ahead, please. Yeah, as I was saying, so um, it's not expressly um, uh, the Nigerian constitution that any particular part of the country uh, we put the president. It is just a, a gentleman agreement in the political party. Uh, to try to align. I think it has been working effectively. Uh, also, the last um, administration that brought in Good Luck Jonathan, where President Yadu has suddenly died uh, in office, and um, Good Luck Jonathan took over, and also now run again um, as a candidate of the PDP from the South. But now, moving forward, um, we believe we did generally that equity and fair play will come to play, which is why the people, uh, the people of the South is believe that it is their turn. Um, if you can recall, um, since the Nambi Aziki way in the First Republic, no person from the Southeast extraction has um, uh, been able to make it to the president, and they just feel that this is the period uh, for the Southeast um, to get the presidency. Good enough, um, the uh, government of the South, uh, the Southern government, at the recent meeting in Ebony State, also conversed that the presidency should come to the South, although they were not specific on which part of the South it should come to. So, but it is not going to be an easy task just for the South is to sit down and feel that the presidency will just be put on their laps or just be given to them like that. It needs a lot of political has to be done. A, a, a lot of um, negotiation has to be done. A lot of consultation has to be done with other regions, and so that they can, whatever candidates are bringing forward, they can be able to be accessible to all other regions. Hmm. Anything short of that is historic on the part of the Southeast. So they have to push, make sure that they do they consult widely, especially within the two main political parties, the PDP and the um, APC, as it were. Until they able to do that and be able to get the confidence of the, all other parts of the country, then it should be a mirage or, um, or an issue that uh, they cannot just be bragging about. It is politics, it's about numbers, and it's also uh, about negotiation. 
But if you just feel that you sit down and say, oh, it is our right, it is our time to get the president in KG case to my brother, if you rest assured that that will not work. Mr. Wando, I want you to also speak on the um, angle of dishonesty with some of all of this. Um, and two points that I'm going to make is, you know, in in a couple of years, you know, back, you know, when some of all the elections, you know, were about, or when some of these decisions were made, there were certain statements that you would hear back then, you know, that this person will run and then it will move to, to so and so place. And so because of that, we need your support. And it was one of the things that they, you know, the uh, politicians used to gather, you know, support um, for, you know, themselves. You know, but we always see that a year or two to the election, some of all those agreements are thrown out the window. Um, there is that. And also, um, the numbers that the Northern Coalition claims to have, you know, do you think it's also unfair that the Middle Belt seems to be dragged into the North, you know, um, when these conversations are had and their numbers, you know, are, are, are pulled together with the Northern numbers and, you know, also completely ignoring the fact that there's many, many um, Christian, I believe, communities in Northern Nigeria that seem to all just be grouped together and called North, um, the North. Yes, I agree with you. Um, let me take you back to 1999. When Obama won the uh, presidency in 1999, the Southwest did not vote for Obama Sanjo. The Southwest didn't support Obama Sanjo, but he won. He won with the vote of um, the North and some other parts of the uh, of the South. That is on record. Yeah, secondly, also, he, he, as you rightly said, yes, he did not have the number. Uh, but even at that, you also realize that when um, um, when uh, Diola uh, won the election or the election that was annulled um, against Ufa, the people the people of the north voted um, um, uh, heavily for Abiola, even against their own son, who, who was um, Tofa, the the candidate of the NRC then Abiola. Uh, was of the SDP, and Abu Abiola was pushing home until that election was annulled by Ibrahim Babangita and his government. What am I saying in essence? There is a possibility for um, this kind of unity, as I, as I said earlier on, where if you're able to converse, you know, um, your policies properly and be able to negotiate uh, properly, even the North, the sentence that it must be put for candidates of the South. Then, um, I want to say that, yes, there are Christians in the North, um, especially some parts, the major part of the North, like, uh, place, especially in the middle, within the middle belt, and even in Kaduna, that I can that I mentioned. So, the tendency also is for them that they, they may also vote for a, a candidate from the South of, um, Christian uh, social text. The only or irrespective of whether, um, the North is a, a bigger or the South is all that. Like then anybody that emerges as a presidential candidate of any party must be able to be able to make sure that all um, that every part and of this section of this country is carried along. But let me give you a scenario. There is also the tendency that the fact that the way it is going now, it's most likely that the presidential candidate of the APC is going to come from the south. It's most likely. That of the PDP is neither here nor there, but we have to be the thing is that the presidential candidates may come from the north and probably um, the vice president from the south. That will be a, a, a great changer uh, in the uh, in the months to come. That is if it, that eventually comes up because the convention of the uh, PDP coming up in October or there are that we determine where they are going to serve their president. If the chairman of the party comes from the south, that means that maybe the presidential candidate will come from the north. Okay, um, many other stories across the newspapers. Um, I want us to look at the one on the Daily um, Independence this morning. Um, first of all, it talks about um, 30 state civil servants uh, who are facing a bleak future in retirement. And um, the story in detail mentioned that since the Pension Reform Act of 2004, um, many states are yet to um, comply. And that means that the civil servants of this state face an uncertain future um, regarding what their pensions will be like. And we've seen time and time again Nigerian pensioners um, queuing up on the, the stories on the Daily Independent again, um, queuing up um, in front of certain offices in their state asking for their pension to be paid. Um, since 2004 till now, over 30 states yet to comply 
Which way? Which way? Which way, Nigeria? You remember the, the music by one of Nigerian's uh, legends, uh, Tony Okosu. The music was Which way, Nigeria? Which way to go? I love my fatherland. I want to. That has always been the, the song of every of, of Nigerian, of every Nigerian, as I may say. But the problem is that our successful government at both the state and um, at the national level have paid mis service to pension payments. I remember in those days in Abuja, if you go to uh, a, a place like Zone 3, you go there used to be a pension office, or I think a military officer. Any day you pass that area, you used to see them, um, all the people lottering around. So we have to just bring back from their various state and be sleeping outside. <laughs> So for we, not for them to regularize and uh, for their uh, pension to be paid, I think that has been good part and the military have been able to try to get their own act together. But the issue is that there is so much corruption going on in all the pension um, uh, institutions. Don't forget that a, a, a particular man that was uh, a MENA, that was um, appointed as the chairman of the pension uh, um, what do you call it now? I, I can't remember what that was called. Instead of making sure that pensions are paid, he must this and embezzled billions and billions of naira that were made for pensioners. And at the end of it, was, he was reconstituted. He ran away. He, he joined jail, and only it was recently that he was rearrested in uh, Niger or thereabouts and brought back to Nigeria and now continued. So that has been the problem. But the issue we have is that. Most states are paying this service. This is the entitlement. This is the entitlement of these workers. They labor and they're supposed to, when they're supposed to reap uh, the fruit of their labor, and nothing is being done. It cuts across streets and it becomes very difficult. So if you see these um, um, government officials, governors, deputy governors, speakers, and the rest of them, even at once they leave office, they budget so much for their pension. Mm -hmm. Even when they are not pressured, when they are not even, they have not retired. Some of them leave government house as governors. And most of the National Assembly to become senators and, uh, and what have you. And continue collecting salaries there and also collecting pension. So I think something that has to be done. Uh, what I believe that there might be, uh, if the federal government and National Assembly can enact a law where this money can be deducted from source, directly from source, and paid directly to the uh, to the pensioners, I don't know how that can be done. Instead of just making it within the state government and, um, and the federal government to handle the issue of pension, most of them die waiting for their pension. And it's fact, unfortunately, lots of people just put that and invest all this money. Mm -hmm. And that is where we find ourselves in Nigeria. All right. Um, you can also quickly share on the Lagos State Governor signing the anti-open grazing uh, bill uh, yesterday. Um, he has, of course, uh, been commended in a few quarters. But quickly share your thoughts on, you know, how that is going across the southern states. Well, Governor, the only is only following um, the agreement or directive of the southern southern governor at the meeting that they held. I think it was in Lagos that they held that meeting, and it was agreed that open business should be banned uh, in the whole of the south. And I think the only is only following suit. And um, don't forget when those states have done that, and some other uh, river states, I guess, as well, and some other states have been used to do that. But my own challenge is, despite agreement by the southern governors, some state governors are still very hesitant in signing that deal. And I don't, know, I don't know why they are doing that. Um, so the governor of Imo State practically says that it's not going to be part of it. And um, then some other states have not lost. But I think this is the way to go. The relative peace we are having in Bengal State now, was due to the signing of the open grazing um, law. Before then, my brother, you could remember that people were being slaughtered on a daily basis in Bayer State, that the governor just said that the only way out of this problem is signing that open grazing um, uh, bill into law. And what it did, that could be reduced, not just uh, it reduced drastically by Oban in ninety percent. And what I don't think that the, 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 the government of the South are trying to do is to be able to prevent that from happening in the South. Already, it was already happening in a um, uh, state, in a state, and other parts, even in a point state. Several people were killed by so-called Polanyi headsmen. 
So uh, that is why I, I commend Dr. Uh, Nelson um, uh, for signing that. Let's also forget that the issue of the bad law is also uh, in progress. They got have signed that, mm -hmm. uh, they got have signed that, and some other states are also to lead to it. So, so um, I commend uh, Dr. Nelson for that uh, initiative. Okay, and um, also on the, the Daily Trust newspaper, the headline there is about a report by, the, by UNICEF that um, bo the Boko Haram crisis has killed about 300,000 children in northeast Nigeria, have displaced many more, and have caused a mental health crisis for over 5,000 children. And uh, this is also as the army released a report saying that um, ISWAP has intensified recruitment of jobless youth in northern Nigeria. Um, when we look at attacks against children, uh, Mr. Nwandu, um, does there really seem to be enough effort on the part of the government and the army to stop this, you know, situation? I would tell you for free that um, it's quite unfortunate. Uh, look at, let's look at it from the point that there are some countries of the world that have a population of just less than 5 million people. We can do a global. There are some countries that are just less than 5 million. So many countries are not up to 10 million. Then, you that uh, 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 on 300,000 people being killed in that particular country, that is, a, a, that is a high rate of fatality. So, if you kill 300,000 people or children, as it were, in that, in, in that country, that means that close to about 10 to 15 percent of that population have been eliminated. But here, we pay the service to solve these issues. Probably because of our uh, population, we're over 200 million. Probably because of the insensitivity of our leaders who don't see anything wrong in what is going on. And probably also um, the level of um, uh, leadership um, of the country, as well as our security agencies, who seems to have lost all sense of responsibility in tackling this issue. Killing of children, that is in the north, 300,000 is not, we are not talking of animals here, yeah? we are not talking of chickens, we are not talking of goats, we are not talking of cows, we are talking of future leaders, leaders of tomorrow. What of those kids could have been a governor, I can assure you. One of them could have ended up becoming a president. One of them could have been one to come up with a solution to stop them that Nigeria is currently facing. They, they were killed. And some of them are still in the dungeon. Some of them are in the forest. They've been kidnapped. Most of the kids in the north cannot go to school. So that shows the level of... It, it, it has come to... Nigeria has come to what George Orwell called animal farm. Hmm. Nigeria has come to animal farm. We are respect of, uh, of human life doesn't seem to count any longer. So it is quite unfortunate. I hope that the federal government will see that statistic. And the security agencies also will see that statistic. Best I can rest assured that tomorrow, Garba Shehu and Femi Adeshina will come out and start to rationalize and try to uh, deny those reports and the rest of them. The Daily Trust newspaper is one of the most authoritative newspaper in Nigeria when it comes to issue of security reporting. And most often than not, anything that comes for Daily Trust, I don't have it when it comes to issue of security. Mm, it's actually a UNICEF report. That we have find ourselves. It's actually a UNICEF report that they that they published anyway oh. about the crisis. All right, Mr. Wandu, now still talking about kids, let's move to the southeast where there's a story on one of the papers saying that um, kids over there would have to retake their West African senior school certificate examinations, um, you know, that they missed because of the sit-at-home order um, uh, by the IPOB. Uh, share your, your views on that one. The IPOB has continuously said that they have cancelled the sit-at-home order, yet people stay at home on Mondays. Um, you know, and of course, this obviously is affecting business and affecting education. Um, personally, um, I, I was I was relieved. First and foremost, let me say uh, I'm from the southeast, and on the behalf of the people of the southeast, I will say thank you very much to YF for that decision. Mm -hmm. A big thank you to YF. We are very grateful. I'm been one of those that have been very very worried about the disruption of this ongoing um, exam by so-called unknown government or what some people now call them. Uh, on, on government unknown, whatever you call it. The fact remains that 
education is key. And if the children have missed this examination, it will take them another one year before they can be able to write an exam again. So the action of, um, the, of YEC on this issue is very, very commendable. And it is a, it is a warning to those that are uh, talking the ember of uh, insecurity in the Southeast. They funny enough, they also realize the fact that I have come to say that they are not behind this case, that they have canceled this case at home um, um, directives issued earlier on, and that they are not part of it. But the question you ask yourself, if I thought that initially um, came up with that uh, directive, said they are not, they are no longer interested in that, and they have stopped that, and people should go about their, their, their activities on Monday, then why are the people of the side is not coming in? I come down to leadership, I've always said. Okay. If leaders do the right thing and assure the people and make sure that um, their 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 lives are property uh, um, are safe, then people will have the uh, to come. Don't forget that that the instances where they come out and they are attacked, and some vehicles have been gone in, in recent times by people. This is where integrity centers have to up their game. Who are those behind? This iPod has come out categorically to say that they are not part of it. Yeah, like you need the DSS. That is the job of the DSS. DSS, the, the spy agency of this country, supposed to do their diligence. It is not just about the military. Yes, the army, the police are there to secure, uh, make sure that people are not because the DSS should be able to go into investigation and find out who are those behind it and who are those, um, uh, uh, trying to, uh, uh, to agitate this issue and make sure that they are arrested. If we can do that, then the issue of this, that, don't forget, the, some of the governors are already trying to do something. So, oh, they are knocking masks last week, walking down the streets of Anambra, um, asking people to come and their lives are compacted and secured. But is that enough? Okay, Mr. Mr. Wandu, I, I want um, us to also look at the story about COVID-19. On the Daily Independent, there's a story here that says um, the Nigerian Institute of Pharmaceutical Research Researchers and um, Cuba are collaborating to conduct clinical trials of COVID-19 vaccines in Nigeria um, later you know, in the next few months. So while that's going on, while there's about to be a collaboration between Nigeria and Cuba for clinical trials um, of COVID-19 vaccines, and we see a story on the Daily Trust that says that Cross River and River States reject compulsory COVID-19 vaccine, even though Edo, Ondo, and Oshun states have made it compulsory um, for civil servants in their own states. But this one here, it is uh, this, the Cross River State Commissioner for Health, Dr. Beta Edu here, that's saying that there is no need to make the COVID-19 vaccination compulsory um, for citizens and that they don't need to impose it. And in Plateau State, the same thing, the State Commissioner for Information and Communication um, really said the same thing. So how do we balance this? Um, co international collaboration for COVID clinical trials, some states making it compulsory and others saying it wasn't necessary? Well, the first part of your question um, on the issue of clinical trials, that is good. I've always been one of those uh, that believe that there is need for us to uh, uh, domesticate uh, the issue of um, uh, COVID-19 vaccine instead of always looking for hand, uh, uh, handouts from um, uh, nations of the world, um, India, United States, United Kingdom, and other Western countries, for us to have our, our, um, uh, uh, those uh, vaccines. If they don't send it to us, then that's what we can do about it. Um, I don't think we've had up to um, 6 million or more than 6 million vaccines uh, since the beginning of this pandemic. Uh, initially, it was 3 million that were sent, then such a some other ones were sent. We are talking of a population of over 200 million. That means we are on that vaccination. And what well, enough, I'm sure you must have been you should be hearing what the news have been making the round that if you are going to start with some part of the world, I, 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 I don't want to be specific now, they say that part of the uh, battles that uh, vaccination that you had there and they're not accepting in this country. I don't know whether the present Ministry of Health and um, the regular agencies have come out to be able to debunk that. And we need to hear from them on that. That has been going on that. If you go to a certain country and you're taking a vaccine in Nigeria, it is not acceptable. You, know, you have to take another one. Then yeah, back to the question on the issue of some state um, saying that uh, they cannot force the photo. It is uh, it is uh, that part to do that. Every state has a right to determine what to do. But what I always say is that let people take their health personally. It's not becoming a personal issue. 
If you think there's a need for you to uh, uh, get the vaccine, get it. I have taken mine, I have taken the two jobs, and then uh, even at that, I'm still doing All right, Mr. the necessary things I need to do, social distancing, washing my hands, and face back. It is your life. It is not the life of the state government. It is not the life of the state government. Mm -hmm. It is your life. If anything happens to you, the so-called governor or state government that says there's no vaccine, that there's no COVID, and there's no need to shut down and they're able to put us to get it. We know you're anything about it. You will die. So my own is that people should take their heads personally, irrespective right. of whatever yes. any yes. government says. And, um, and that's the way to go. All right. Thank you very much, as mm -hmm. always, on Tuesdays for joining us and for... Uh, being a part of uh, the discussion this morning. Yes, and I do agree here. with you. We need to take responsibility for our own lives because the ultimate decision really um, is up to you. Thank you very much again, Mr. Wandu. Have a great day. Thank you for agreeing with me and do have a nice day. <laughs> All right.